What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another match analysis. This time we're going to be talking about Manchester City's 2-0 away victory over Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. Before we crack on with the video, I just wanted to say you could press the subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe, notifications on, we've got plenty of football and Manchester City videos all coming up. So stay tuned for that. So we're going to start off with the match. So we're going to start off with our first talking point and we're going to be talking about the team. So what Manchester City put out and what Arsenal. Arsenal have uh, put out and basically the big talking point is Man City chose not to put Kevin De Bruyne and Leroy Sane on the team so they put them on the bench and Riyad Mahrez, Sterling, Gundogan they all ended up starting so we're going to talk about that first so my opinion I'd have probably gone with De Bruyne and Sane rather than uh, Sterling and Gundogan which I was probably wrong with because obviously Ryan still ended up having a very good game in this game but I thought De Bruyne probably still should have started ahead of Gundogan if Sterling was fit to play and can play after only having five days of training then surely the same to be said for Kevin De Bruyne. And Kevin De Bruyne obviously was capable of coming on in the second half and making a difference. Um, I didn't think Gundogan had too good a game in this, in this uh, match. That's just my opinion. You can leave in the comments what you think of that one. David Silva couldn't play. He had a minor injury. So we're expecting to see him next week at some point. Will he start or not? I don't know. We'll wait and see for Pep's press conference uh, on Friday probably. And we'll see what the news update is regarding that. Uh, for Arsenal... Petr Cech ended up starting ahead of Leno. I was expecting Leno to start for Arsenal, but he hasn't. Cech went in goal. I thought Cech had a mediocre game at best, in my opinion. A bit error-prone here and there. Should have done better for the goal, too, but we'll get on with that in a moment. Lacazette put on the bench. Aubameyang leading the lines. I thought Arsenal's midfield also, uh, particularly in the second half, a lot better getting involved with uh, the... Yeah, a lot more of the attacks looked a lot more involved in the second half. But City unplayable in the first 20 25 minutes, though. So we're going to crack on with the talking points. And first, up, we're going to start off with what happened in the game. So City went 1 0 ahead after 14 minutes. Raheem Sterling ran in from the left. Arsenal backing off, backing off. So just continues making a run towards the centre. Finds some space, just hits a shot with his right foot. Low and hard into the net. It's nowhere near the corner. Petr Cech, I'm not sure why I'm not anticipating Raheem Sterling's going to go on his right foot. And the only way, because he's not going to get it through the gaps, is to go. To the goalkeeper's left. Petacek goes to the, to the left but kind of just hesitates and leaves his arm down. Uh, and I thought Petacek probably should have done a little bit better. The ball smacks the camera at the back of the net. Comes back out and confuses the Manchester City bench. Which is entertaining. If you watch the highlights of the goal. I think it might show that at the end of the highlights. Uh, yeah, it's particularly funny. But there we go. I felt Petacek should have done better in my opinion. So maybe Leno might get his start next week. We'll wait and see. Uh, the next talking point we're going to talk about Arsenal. I thought Arsenal had some great opportunities in this game. Arsenal looked like they were lacking a little bit in their sharpness. I don't know what their pre-season preparation has been, but uh, they looked a little bit disorientated. They looked a little bit like they didn't know what they were doing at times. They did it sometimes, they didn't at others. Man City looked the exact same, by the way. At times, we were fantastic. At times, we were extremely poor, making mistakes with uh, Edison, with Gundogan, uh, with errors coming in here and there. Particularly in the second half as well. Like I said, Arsenal were a lot better then. But they missed some golden opportunities, Arsenal. There was one where Edison gave the ball away. Ozil with a heavy touch. Edison collected it. That was in the second half. Uh, we've also Arsenal. Looked a great chance with Lacazette. Hitting it, I think it was on the half volley. It was... Uh, well, sat up nicely for him and ended up slicing it wide, which is a good chance missed. Uh, Man City got away with one really there, and there's also a shot by Bellerin, I think, in the first half, hit straight to Edison. It's not like Arsenal didn't have the chances in this game. They did, they just didn't put them away. Manchester City, when they were presented with their three or four good opportunities, ended up putting two away. That's where the difference was. So we'll move on to the next bit, which was uh, the goal, obviously. But just before the goal, uh, Aguero, a wonderful one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Never looks up, shoots straight at check, disappointing effort. What's more disappointing is Kevin De Bruyne. Was in acres of space, all he needs to do is look up, look to his left, pass it. Boom, there's 2-0, game done. But it doesn't matter, we don't, we don't really have to dwell on that too much because uh, Mendy and Sterling, who linked up very well in this game, linked up again. Sterling feeds in Mendy, Mendy makes a direct run towards the box, squares it across, strimple, straight to Bernardo Silva. Great first time finish, into the net, perfect. Bernardo Silva, I thought, a little bit... A little bit out of his depth, because Arsenal were managing, particularly after 20 minutes, got a grip on the midfield. And we didn't really see much of Bernardo Silva. Once Bernardo Silva had moved out wide, and Man City ended up changing things around, Bernardo Silva was absolutely fantastic. Fully deserves his goal on 64 minutes, which saw Manchester City win the game, ultimately. Last bit of the talking points once to get through before we end up summarising the game. Mendy did a barge in the box. I think it was on Mustafi. He went down in the World Cup. They were given. They were. They were given them. Uh, I feel like Man City's probably got away with this. I feel like if we do this game in, game out, where we're going to the box on set pieces and just start bullying and barging, then, you know, we're not going to get away with it forever. So I thought we got away with one there. I thought that, you know, at the World Cup, that would have been given as a penalty. I'm surprised the penalty weren't given there. But there we go. Uh, 
I'm not going to complain, we've got three points. I'm sure Arsenal fans are probably going to be very disappointed with that. But that's uh, for them to talk about. I just feel like we've got away with one there. But all in all, three points. I'll take three points every day of the week, particularly as a difficult away ground like the Emirates. So, we're going to move on with uh, the game for Arsenal. I thought Lich Steiner, when he came on for... Uh, Maitland-Niles, after he went off injured in the first half, was fantastic for Arsenal. Looked a lot better in closing down and uh, cutting out uh, the attacks from Walker, from uh, Mahrez as well. I thought that Lacazette, when he came on, looked very dangerous. Aubameyang moving out left, Lacazette sitting in front. Caused a lot of problems for Man City, particularly when Man City were trying to make things work in the second half and was looking for gaps. There weren't a lot of gaps, and Arsenal's midfield would end up pressing, winning the ball back a lot, forcing the mistakes from Man City. And then, like I said, because of that, we had them chances that we were discussing earlier, uh, particularly with uh, Lacazette and also that miscontrol from um, Ozil as well, uh, from Edison's chance. Things like what happened in Arsenal just can't really make it work. I'm sure as the games go on and as the season they get into it, I'm sure things will settle down and they'll find their stride and it'll be a lot difficult to game. So probably a good time for us to have been facing Arsenal away, but it was a good opportunity this also for Arsenal facing Manchester City because we weren't at our best. I've seen us play a lot better than what we did today, but still we've come out with three points. We're at fifth in the table now. We've got a match at home next Sunday. We're up against Huddersfield, so we've got a lot of positives to look forward to. In terms of performances, like I said, once Bernardo Silva moved out wide, we were excellent. I thought uh, that we looked a lot better. I thought that Mares in the first 20 minutes or so, linked up fantastically well with Walker, making things work. Sterling out on left instead of Leroy Sane, linking up well with Benjamin Mendy, making things work. I thought that was also too very good. Fernando, Fernandinho, sorry, great in the centre. We'll not have Fernando for a little while, let's not talk about that, but Fernandinho was great in the centre. Um, Bernardo Silva and Gundogan, I was a bit unsure on that midfield too. I imagine once De Bruyne comes back and we get David Silva back, it'll look a lot better uh, than what uh, David, uh, Bernardo Silva and Gundogan looked, in my opinion. Uh, but there we go. I thought Laporte was absolutely brilliant in this game. Um, but all in all, I'd probably give my man of the match to Bernardo Silva. I think he fully deserves it. I thought he was fantastic in this game. Ended up making the difference and getting that clinical second goal. Lovely finish too. Um, but... All in all, we'll come to a conclusion before we get on to the stats. Uh, I thought Man City fully deserved the three points at the end of the day in this game. I thought that we were a lot better. We showed more clinical touch. We showed more emphasis going forward. Arsenal looked a bit, little, little bit confused, disorientated. Like they were confused with what they were meant to be doing. They looked a bit rusty. And Man City looked rusty too, but not as rusty. That's my conclusion. Uh, and ultimately, it makes a difference. Man City ended up getting a couple of goals. I thought that Man City's side maybe made this more about quality, which is what we need to do, because Arsenal are a quality side, it's just Man City, you feel like we've got more quality, made this game about quality, it tells in the end, it always tells in the end, uh, Arsenal need to do a lot to improve going forward, they need to work well better as a team, they need to settle things down and try and play their way into games, but every week they're not going to be facing Manchester City, and equally Manchester City aren't going to be facing Arsenal every week, so I'm sure the Gundogan and Bernardo Silva will see it more and more this season in the centre, uh, this is a difficult game to be able to start that, so we can't really judge it, but once the games get going and we start going through the games, we get through uh, 10, 15, even 20 games in, we can make a proper judgment on where things are going from there. So, uh, we'll end the video by looking at some of the stats, because I found it interesting. One particular interesting one, where before we get on with the stats, uh, was the second half stats. Arsenal matched Manchester City for possession. Not a lot of sides can say they've done that, but Arsenal did. It's a big pitch. You'd expect Man City to dominate the ball. All in all, Man City ended up having 58% possession overall to Arsenal 42, but in the second half, Arsenal, like for like, more than matched Manchester City. They'd be disappointed not to get a goal and make things a little bit more interesting, I am sure. City ended up having 17 shots to Arsenal's 9. Eight of them on target, which is excellent. Nearly 50% of shots we had ended up going on target to Arsenal's three, which I'm sure they'll be disappointed with. Um, a couple of them shots at Edison as well. Um, bit unlucky, bit unlucky with offsides too, but there we go. Um, in terms of passes, Arsenal ended up making 399 passes at a pass completion rate of 80%. City ended up making 553 at a pass completion rate of 84%. Neither of them sides will, will be happy with them pass statistics, I'm sure, because both of them are normally around 85 to 90, even 90% plus. So that's some work for Arsenal and Manchester City to work on for next week. In terms of key passes, both ended up having 9 each, which is uh, interesting, I find. Like I said, Arsenal more than a match, particularly in the second half. Man City ended up connecting with one of their 17. Arsenal connecting with one of their 
there. 13 crosses in. Neither side that dominant in the air, but you wouldn't expect that. In terms of tackles, Arsenal ended up making a lot more tackles. 22 compared with Man City 6. Man City did connect uh, and successful pass, uh, tackled 5 of their 6. So Arsenal with 14 of their 22. 14 interceptions to 13 to Arsenal. I should imagine these uh, defensive stats are probably going to be dominated by Arsenal. Yeah, 11 headed clearances compared with Man City's 4 and aerial duels is ended up uh, 22 apiece. Man City connect, um, ended up winning 36% of their aerial duels with 8 out of 22, 14 out of 22 for Arsenal, which is 63%. Discipline-wise, both picking up a couple of yellow cards each, so not too nasty, not too much to talk about in terms of the referee. But all in all, three points. We'll take that every single day of the week. So there we go. That's been the match analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you enjoyed the video. So there we go. Social media links there in the description below. I'm going to leave up the links to my second channel, my gaming channel, and my brother's partner channel, Doom Mix. All the drinks mixed in. Leave links to them if you want to go and check them out at the end of the video. I'm also grabbing the description, my fantasy league that I'm running. If you want to go and join that, I'll leave in the links to that and the code. If you want to go and join it. I'm looking to try and get around 20 members. So it'll be nice. If anyone is interested to go and check that out and join the league, I'll be closing that on Monday if you wish. Um, yeah, there we go. That's been the video. So I'll see you all again for the next football and Manchester City video. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. Ciao for now.